What's up? Good morning to you. So this time, this segment, we want to introduce to you a business. I think many people may already know the name, know the brand. It is a family brand, household name. It is True Value, based in Viewfort, but supplying the whole island. And it was really great, especially at a crucial time like this during the pandemic, to get some business insights from the lady at the helm. So this is truly going to be a story of inspiration that might just inspire you if you're deciding to become an entrepreneur yourself or you're in the business field right now dealing with the motions of the pandemic so listen up guys this is gonna be a good one please enjoy good morning dbs family season's greetings to you and i'm super excited whilst we're here on our southern trip you know it's not every day we get to go as far as view i'm quite excited because we had businesses on our radar on our hit list that we just had to find out about so right now i'm here with deborah tobier how are you doing today pretty good thank you kayla it's a pleasure to be on your show this morning thank you and i'm so mm -hmm. thankful that you had time in your schedule to accommodate us because one of the main reasons here as well is that you know, as we've been going through the motions of the pandemic, mm -hmm. I feel like business places, entrepreneurs, small macro businesses, everybody's in need of some encouragement. And when we see businesses exactly just like the true value group of company mm -hmm. who've been around for so long and, you know, still finding ways to exist and push on even during the pandemic, little did we know we'd be living to see this. Yeah. I think it's going to be very inspirational that we can inspire others as we get ready and get set to switch gears for 2022. So I'm thrilled to be here with you. And I would love if you could share for our viewers just a little bit more so people have a better understanding of exactly a lot more information about True Value Group mm -hmm. of Companies. Okay, sure. Well, thank you for that. Um, well, we have been in operation since 1998 as True Value. Um, we're a lumber and hardware store, but the thing is we've always wanted to be more than just a regular retailer. So when we initially started, we always speak about our humble beginnings. We operated out of a derelict row of warehouse buildings, and um, we rented from unit to unit, expanded gradually over probably a period of maybe four or five years or so. And um, when we realized the growth that we had seen in those years, one of the things that we were um, cognizant of is the fact that the conditions were not the best for staff members or for customers. So we went into acquisition of the property at the time through negotiations with our bank um, to acquire the property, and which was really a land purchase, which then we went into architectural designs. We got the DC approvals, and we were able to design a facility, which is what we operate out of today, um, over a period of maybe a two-year period, from 2004 to 2006. Um, what I think was wonderful about it is that you know you have the foresight and a vision to know even though what you're used to now and how you operate, you can see what it can be and what the potential is and what are the ways that even the design of the facility can improve on the efficiency levels and the customer service, the quality of the customer service. Mm -hmm. So um, we actually finished the facility in 2006, end of 2006, and we've continued to expand. And what I say, Kayla, to a lot of business people, is one of the things that you need to be mindful of, it sounds very, very you know, standard and typical, is that you must understand who are the people that keep you in business. So everybody says, hey, listen, I am customer focused. Every decision I make, um, my customers are at the center of it. Now, for you to be customer focused, you need to be employee centric as well, because you need to make sure that your staff members who are key and central to your success are happy and comfortable in the environment. Um, in order to do that, those are the reasons that you look at expanding and improving on a facility. Um, over the years also, our bankers have been critical to our success. Okay, the consideration they gave in way of loans mm -hmm. and um, the support that they've given us, which happens to be Bank of Simulation. Yes, I'm still here <laughs> after so many years. Yes. <laughs> yes, but, um, you know, and then, of course, your suppliers. So what I think of when I tell young people who are starting out or anybody who's starting out in business, Always keep your focus on the groups of individuals that make up your success and ensure that you are satisfying and meeting their needs. So it means that you're paying your loans on time, you are paying your suppliers on time, you're treating your customers well, you're treating your members of staff well, okay? Um, also, that brings to mind that you're also flexible. You've never arrived, 
like you just mentioned about the pandemic. Yes. <laughs> it's, you, you always feel like just when you get to that plateau and you've been able to finally manage over yeah. the large scale investments that you've made and maybe you know, we had one particular investment that was non-viable, um, that you know, something else comes up. But you have to have that flexibility to adjust in that environment. Right. Again, even supply is at issue now. So our typical suppliers over the years, um, through no fault of theirs, are either unable to get the items that we require because of shortages from the source markets, right. or even if they're able, the cost is prohibitive. I mean, it's maybe twice the price. And for me, I mean, I'm ever sensitive to the fact that as much as it has reduced the consumer's buying power, um, I have to be sensitive as a business owner. What are the things I can do to mitigate that as well? And, um, you know, it's like when you look at the consumer, the impact on the consumer, it's also something that should be um, up for discussion, um, you know, with higher authority, with the government and so on. Because when you look at the compounding factor of importational costs and so on, on the cost of goods, I mean, maybe government intervention is necessary because the cost of inflation, not just limited to, let's say, my specific industry, like the lumber industry, but also supermarket, I mean, basic necessities, you know, so that it has been quite a journey. I can imagine, and you know, mm -hmm. I think it's just also an exciting time because mm -hmm. with the challenges posed by the pandemic, it also, I guess, forces more creativity. Innovation, and as you said, right. the innovation. Mm -hmm. So right now, especially being such a longstanding company, mm -hmm. uh, let's enlighten the people a little bit more and tell us about some of the companies under the True Value Group of Companies yes. umbrella. So yes, so actually we launched an investment in 2011 mm -hmm. called Emerald Vista, um, located in the St. Vans Bay area. It was very key to us that whilst we understood the industry, being suppliers in the industry, that we take on investment that is not considered in any way to compete with our primary customers who are the contractors, right? right. These are our repeat customers. So, I mean, it was a very um, risky initiative. I mean, I think at the time was maybe not opportune, to be honest, um, Kayla, but I do not regret that investment because I think it gave us so much experience that despite purchasing land at a considerable sum, 18 acres of land for development, and it's raw land, wow. and getting into the delivery of you know the civil works for the infrastructural development, also looking at the overall concept of land and house packages, despite the fact that we were considered non-viable for all of those years, we launched Palmy's Cove on a smaller parcel, 5.5 acres, and it was really based on the experience that we had gained as land developers. So at that point, you know, people would even say to me, but don't you wish you did Palmy School first and then you branched off into Emerald Visa? And actually, no, because I think Emerald Visa was such a <laughs> major endeavor yeah. that it actually placed me um, in a very good position to gain, um, you know, the confidence mm -hmm. of buyers, even though I was gearing at more of a middle income market. Yeah. So that investment, it was 30 lots, and we actually sold it over a five year period mm -hmm. from developing raw land. It was sold completely. So I would say also that not because things, you know, don't work out the way that you would have hoped mm -hmm. that you ever become discouraged and you don't pursue what your dreams are. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. you know, especially on my show, we love to see when we meet people who are pursuing their passion. So, mm -hmm. you know, people have these visions, but the difference between bringing it to reality is how bad you want it and how hard you're going to work for it because right. it's not always going to come easy. And when it comes down to putting in the hard work at some of the obstacles that start to coming the way, you know, people don't go through and see it through the long haul. So they never meet the end goal. Yes, but it's, it's about persevering and, you know, mm -hmm. like you said, the flexibility and rolling with it. So I think mm -hmm. that in itself is some amazing advice that we can um, share with the viewers and anybody who's venturing into anything business-wise right now. Um, so are there any other um, companies that yes, you'd like to um, mention? Yes, so we have Emerald Visa, we have Palmy's Cove. Um, of course, the spin-off from those projects is that we have a projects company called Optima Construction. And then we also now manage a group of companies um, formerly, well, owned by my parents. Mm -hmm. um, people would know the names Builder's Choice, Family Food Mart, right. um, Airprint, and Blue Puma. So we really have central management of those organizations. And what we're very insistent about is trying to institute the standards that we have embraced over the years so we can have a duplication of the success and then we can maintain longevity and ensure that we have legacy companies. I like mm -hmm. that. And you yes. see, that's what it is when you need to think of your plans for the 
long haul. So don't just stop with what's right in front right. of you. And as you can see from 1998 to being here in 2021, where we're getting ready to ring in the new year and whatever it may bring, I think this is amazing advice for anybody who's lacking a little inspiration or feeling a little bit down because the adversities right now are probably really coming at you, but it's about the perseverance. And this is a classic example of this. So over the years, just as we get ready to wrap up, mm -hmm. is there any highlight from, you know, 1998 till now, anything that really stands out or is a highlight um, just from your experience in this business field? And, you know, because mm -hmm. it's not just, as you said, only the construction, so many different branches yes. under this umbrella. So. Yes. Uh, what has been maybe the highlight of this journey thus far? Um, I think, well, the highlight, or I think for me, the fundamental is, is that I must always be open to growing as an individual myself. So I think that maybe a lot of us through our journeys and, you know, our experiences, we may feel that we've plateaued, we've reached the pinnacle of success and so on. But I think just being open-minded to understand that you can become better, you can utilize the skills and resources that, you know, maybe a managing director of a group of companies might feel that, okay, I have my people doing that. Mm -hmm. um, human resource development has also been a big focus for us. And um, the other thing is, Kayla, I liken myself to a school professor because I feel like, you know, anytime you have a new member of staff come in, um, you're trying to um, help them to embrace the values of the company and understand the culture and why it is so important to us that we strive for excellence in everything we do. So I think it's an evolution and it will always be an evolution. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way to put it. It mm -hmm. truly is an evolution. And again, with that spoke in the wheel that we got with the pandemic, you know, came out of nowhere. That's really testament to that as well. So as we close off, you know, I want to thank you very much for taking time out because I'm certain your schedule is very busy, mm -hmm. but at least being able to share such inspiring words and even the history behind the company, the, mm -hmm. as you said, the humble origins until yes. now. I mean, this should inspire any of us who need it to just take that leap and do what we need to do. Now, if persons are interested mm -hmm. in maybe finding more information, is there a general like area or contact number or maybe even like a website that people sure. can reference? We have websites for each of the companies. Some of them may be a bit outdated. <laughs> we'll have to work on that, but you can call 454-3296 and all of our email addresses are it listed on our website. So we have truevalue.com. Um, TrueValueSLU.com and we also have Optima Construction and so on. Yes. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Well, on this note, I thank you once more. Thank and you. You're welcome. Yeah. And see, Lucia, let this inspire you. So again, from a long-standing <coughs> business, getting some tricks of the trades mm -hmm. and the reality of what we need to know so that we can endure and continue. Because you know what? It's a whole industry and the more of us out here doing it, you know, it makes it better for everybody. So Agreed. we want to wish you a positive day. I definitely feel there's some inspiration right now. And again, thank you so much. Yes, welcome and thank you. You're welcome. Kayla. So mm -hmm. viewers, we'll see you again soon. Bye.